Hello, everyone, and welcome. Lewis here with The Hit Life, where we bring you news, interviews, and more from all your favorite Southeast regional MMA promotions. Today, we're getting to know Keith Forbes and his coach, Miguel Cruz, of To The Top Boxing Club in Castleberry. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to The Hit Life. What's up? How y'all doing? Thank you for having me, man. Let's jump right into it, Keith. Uh, how did you find To The Top Boxing Club? Oh, honestly, it it was fate, to be honest, because it was one day. I work in the mall, right? It was one day they came in the mall, handing out flyers, doing their thing, promoting the gym. And I didn't think nothing of it at first, right? And then later on, later on down down the months, um, one of my friends ended up wanting to do a sign up for boxing. So I was like, cool, I'll do it with you. And it comes to find out it was these people, you know what I'm saying? And during that time, I wasn't really like being being my true self, like with, with God, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. And come to find out there are they're also a gospel gym too. So that's what really drew me to them and made me stay with them and stick closer to them. Ironically, Keith came on my birthday too. So it was uh, February 7th. So I was working on my birthday. Uh, we, re we recently worked on Diana's birthday too, my wife. And, uh, you know, she was kind of upset because it was her birthday, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, hey, we got to put the grind in on her birthday. So it's kind of funny that Keith came to this gym on my birthday. So not that long ago. That's the day he started. It was February 7th of this year. So he's only got seven months of experience. Yeah, wow. it, was, it was a faithful encounter. It was a God encounter. Absolutely. Uh, did you do any combat sports before you guys met? Um, no. He played the UFC video game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ironically, that's what got me too. Because before I started boxing, I was playing Fight Night. I don't know if you know the, the ESPN Fight Night game. Mm -hmm. So I was playing the Fight Night game. And then I started boxing. And then it just clipped to mentally. Mm -hmm. Coach. <laughs> my team right there coach what was keith like when he first started with you um i saw i saw a fighter in his spirit you know what i'm saying because it was tough like the workout that i ran him through it was his first day he threw up it was tough oh his God. buddy had experience so he trained at another gym and he, so his buddy was in there you know trying to trying to show keith something and keith was in there and i was pushing him and he was his body just you know you could tell like you know what he was feeding himself and you know his body just wasn't it wasn't in athlete shape. Yeah. And he threw up. And then after that, he came back. I was surprised. I was like, you know, because I didn't think that they were going to stick to it. But they both, you know, they both ended up signing up. His friend, who I thought was going to stick to it the most, ended up, you know, falling off doing his thing. But Keith stuck around. And he got, he got really good, really fast. Yeah. So <laughs> that day when I threw up, man, like, before <laughs> that, I, I really was getting bad. Putting that, like, you know what I'm saying? Chicken not eggs. eating right, eat tricking when you're drinking soda, <laughs> like eating unhealthy and stuff like that. And then after those three three times I threw up that first, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm never going back to, like, soda, like, any unhealthy things like that. Like, all I eat is really now is, like, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That's what I eat every day, like. So like, you've healthy, changed healthy. physically, <laughs> mentally. Men mentally. Coach, how has his attitude changed since starting with you? Um, honestly, Keith has always been the same, but he's been more hungry as a fighter. He's got more vision as a person. Mm -hmm. So I remember when he first came, kind of, he was a little depressed, a little negative, but now he's more positive. He's more motivated. And his, it's like a fire inside of him. And I see it, you know, like con it's contagious, like he spreads it around. So, you know, he, he's coaching here as well. So he, he's, um, he's just, he's just taking on a whole new assignment in his life and he's, He's happy, like, you know, he's, so really he's the same person, you know, like to say he's always been outgoing since I met him, but mm -hmm. he's just, you know, he's, he's shining, like he's shining more. So. Sure. I say, I'll say it's God's work because at the end of the day, I'm, I, this is what he, he wants, he wants for me. And this is the path that he led me on and his own, and his only fate and his only, only his work that I'm here right now to his day doing this. Cause I really could have been like, been where I'm at. I'm not even from Florida. I'm from New Jersey, actually. You know what I'm saying? I, I left New Jersey to get a better life. You know what I'm saying? Just me by myself, 18 years old. Stayed with my uncle for a little bit. He moved and I was on my own. You know what I'm saying? 
it's just me and my roommate now. We we just we just cooling. So now it's like I gotta do it for them. You know what I'm saying? And it's only God's work that He put me here and, and show me, teaching me how to be a leader. You know what I'm saying? Teaching me how to work with people. Teaching me how to be calm, composed, and disciplined. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Yeah. Man. It really found sounds like you found a, a, a good family with to the top uh, that that makes you feel comfortable where you can grow and flourish. Um, when coach, when did you decide that he was ready for amateur competition? Well, we took him for a, um, an exhibition. So basically like a sparring match. It was about an hour and a half away. And the opponent, the only opponent they had for him was this dude. He was like. 200 pounds and this was boxing he was 190 190 yeah he was 190 wow. and keith keith was like 145 at the time now mm-hmm. Keith's walking around like 150 uh and keith held his own like he was backing this dude up like keith has a heavy punch like his hands and, he hits like somebody that weighs 200 and trust mm-hmm. and believe so, that that he has a clean jab that boy was hitting me too like, and this was his first it was my first, first ever. one ever yeah, I was nervous as heck. Yeah. I was nervous as heck, boy. Oh my god! But, and he kept lifting his leg like a Muay Thai fighter. <laughs> like I'm like, keep this is boxing. He got his boxing boots on and everything. Uh-huh. We kept lifting his leg up like he's about to throw a front kick. And the ref had to tell him like, dude, put your foot down. Like, so, uh, so yeah, I was yeah. To catch him off guard. I don't know what I was doing at that point. And then as far as keep like with MMA and stuff like that, um, I don't do I don't do anything jujitsu. I'm a boxer. Um, mm-hmm. I have a kickboxing background, but I'm a boxer and that's what I teach. That's what I love. But um, I'm not going to knock him. Like, if he's got the gift for jiu-jitsu, I want him to use it and flourish in it. So, Coach Christian, he's not here right now. And Coach Carlo, um, they've been pouring in a lot to him when it comes to the ground game. And apparently, he's really good at that, too. So, we're looking to get Keith in the ring, or in the octagon, rather, uh, October 1st for his debut MMA fight. Wow, yeah. okay. So, yeah, your first fight was a Muay Thai bout. So, you are interested into moving to MMA, Keith. Yes. Yeah, That's that was the plan from the beginning. Um Unfortunately, my opponent put on. I don't even know why, but I'm glad I got to fight the person I fought. You know what I'm saying? He he was a tough opponent. I'm I'm gonna give it to him. Like mm-hmm. I was nervous. You know what I'm saying? He was nervous. It was it was it was our thing. But you know what I mean? But we both stuck in there. You know what I'm saying? Did our thing. Did, hit hit for blow, blow for blow. Did, did we had to do in there? You know what I'm saying? As men, and we accomplished what we need to do. Yeah, uh, Coach Miguel. All right. Uh, with your uh, kickboxing striking background and to the top boxing club being a boxing gym. What are you guys doing there to cater to the interest in MMA and, gra- and grappling of young fighters like Keith? So I want to show you real quick. So we just installed jujitsu mats and we got some wall pads. So uh, we oh, noticed great. a lot of people are taking interest in the, mm-hmm. in the jujitsu and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. uh, so we wanted to give them a cage. So the cage is coming soon. Uh, we're getting some quotes from different companies and stuff like that, and hopefully it can come this month. But um, so yeah, that's that's one thing. We're just kind of changing. We're we're building that bridge between the boxing guys and the MMA guys. So you know, like there's a there's MMA guys think you know boxing's trash, and boxing people think that MMA is trash. So we're right. just building a bridge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're coexisting here. Like I stay in my lane with boxing, but I still respect the art of jujitsu. Highly, you know, I respect it. It's like Chinese to me. It's just I'm a striker. I don't like being put in a position where I can't strike. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna say it sucks or it's stupid. Like I, I know somebody that knows jujitsu can probably fold me like a pretzel. So I respect it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we wanna, like I said, Keith is good at it. I'm not gonna put him in a box. I'm not gonna say you can only box or I'm not that guy. So if he's got the gift, I want him to use it. Those types of moves, and then especially with all the money you're investing into the gym to grow it as a, a more rounded MMA gym and not not just a boxing gym, uh, it really sounds like you're in the right place, Keith, to grow. Um, to the Top Boxing Club is being represented as a ministry-based gym. How does that help you guys with training and during your matches? Well, we like to keep God first. You know, we, we believe oh, that yes. we're, we're, we're here for a reason and we're, we, we have a higher force behind us. So we're hanging on. We're not just trusting in ourselves, but we believe that. And I believe that God wants us to be strong. He doesn't want his people to be weak. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, we accept everybody. We're not, you know, just because we are who we are. That doesn't mean that we don't accept people for who they are. But we see God transforming people here through just the training 
through just the people around here. So we just like, you know, we take everybody how they are and we just want them to be stronger mentally, spiritually, uh, emotionally, uh, physically, mentally, every, in every which way, shape or form. And we just allow God to do his thing. So we're not the type of, we're not the, the typical um, traditional Christians. You know what I'm saying? We are extraordinary. We're unorthodox. We are out of the box. We just, we're just showing the love of Christ in our own way. That's who we are. Yeah. Having similar beliefs and values is really important for a team. Uh, you're brought together and stand by something a lot bigger than just a gym brand. Let's talk about your last fight, Keith. You defeated a more experienced athlete in your debut by TKO in the second round. How do you feel about it? I ain't gonna lie. I could have did way better. I ain't gonna lie. I was nervous, but I'm proud of myself, though. I really am proud of myself because that third round, I was ready to let it all go. You know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of myself for what I did that night. I did what I had to do and I handled my business. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm proud of Keith, too. Uh, he was very responsive to everybody. And uh, we were yelling from the corner. Uh, and he was he was responsive to everything we said. And he was attacking. He was applying everything we were saying. Um, like I said, I, I really think God was protecting his opponent, Val, because it could have been – he was coming with, with some bad intentions. He was coming to perform. He mm -hmm. was coming to, 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 to make – can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Keith was coming to make a very awesome first impression. And unfortunately, because he did not, he chose not to continue. That's what I saw. Like he, he, he you know, he just didn't have it in him. The ref stopped the fight. But Keith was coming to, to, to put on an awesome display. So that's okay. That's what we got the next fights for. So I believe that, you know, he was protected and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got. Way more fights coming. Mm -hmm. When Keith won uh, the bout, he was very happy. But from what I saw, your teammates and your coach were a lot happier about the W than you were, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were pretty happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just yeah. the love, man. That's just the love I get from my team, man. The support is just, it's great. I love it, man. That's mm -hmm. what I live for. What was your strategy going into the match? And did everything go according to plan? Oh, honestly... Everything did not go according to plan. I, well, to be honest, I knew I wanted to go in there and box him. You know what I'm saying? Um, really put my hands on him. But unfortunately, I didn't get to let my hands go as much as I wanted to because of the nerves. So it's just, I did what I had to do, though. So that, that's all I have to say. So you still oh, have so more stored better. away that we haven't seen yet. Yes, oh sir. yeah, definitely, definitely. It's just yeah, it's a lot of a lot of different a lot of different ways I can come. It's it's not just one 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 style. I I, I fight I like to fight weird sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just watch MMA, just just watch. <laughs> Person believe it's gonna be a show, it's gonna be fun. What did you guys learn from it? I really I really learned that like you know what I'm saying, it's all is only about your opponent and not about the people watching you, right? You know what I'm saying? Just focus on your opponent and your coaches. Because that's really all I heard and all I saw in that ring. Mm -hmm. I did not see anybody else but my opponent and my coach. And that's what really helped me get through my fight. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely learned that we need to invest some more cage work. Because now we're making our presence known in these uh, MMA and Muay Thai scenes. So that's what really made me put pedal to the metal and let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the Leo Code organization is something new. Um, it wasn't around when I was competing, but we want to continue to be around for these competitions. I think it's great exposure. I think that it's great that they have them every month. So, uh, yeah, we just want to, we want to be, we want to fight as much as we can in these uh, Leo Code events. And on top of that, it's right down the street from us. They're literally four miles away. Mm -hmm. So we want to do these as much as we can to get them ready because it, you know, it's almost like a pro show. It's, it's no headgear. You know, when I was fighting amateur kickboxing, it was with headgear. So it's almost, it's preparing them for the pros. I think, so I think that um, investing in the cage is a very wise decision. And we're just going to go forward, pedal to the metal. Yes, sir. Yeah, you guys looked great out there. You're primed and ready. Uh, I'm really excited to see what what's in your future. Is there anything you, you want to tell the people watching? Um, man, thank you for supporting me, guys. Um, I love y'all. For those who are watching, you know what I'm saying? Um, I hope to, I hope you guys are able to um, keep continuing seeing me in my journey. You know what I'm saying to the top, and I'm definitely gonna make it there. And just watch.
<laughs> I got to say thank you, Lewis, uh, the Hit Life MMA, just for having oh, us. Yes, and thank also you. keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, I see your brand and your YouTube channel taking off. Thank you for giving uh, MMA fighters and amateur fighters a platform to, to speak their minds and to uh, showcase their skills and all that you do. I believe in your vision. So thank you for having us. And um, I guess see you at the top, man. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 uh, we're that's, just going to live up to the name. That's the motto. Yes, sir. I'm going with you guys. Thank you so much for that, Coach. Okay. All right. So, Keith, you said we we're going to see you in an MMA match October 8th. Do you know who your opponent is? Um, no, not at the moment. I think it's October 1st. It's, a, it's the first. Yeah. October 1st. Okay. Yeah. October um, 1st. We're not sure who the opponent is, but we think that he's matched up. But it's, it's pretty flexible. He's definitely going to fight. And uh, Brandon's opponent needs – his coach needs to confirm, and Brandon will be making his uh, return to the, to the cage as well. And all, honestly, I really don't care who I fight in that cage. Um, you could put me against anybody, and I'm just going to perform how I perform and do my best to my ability, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to put on a show, you know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's going to be great. So just put me against anybody. I ain't, I ain't going to back down to nobody. Well said, Keith. Thank you so much, guys, for doing this. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Coach Miguel. I look forward to seeing you guys October 1st at Laleo Code. Yes, sir. Good. We'll see you then. <laughs> you have a nice night. Have a good All night. Right, night thank you, guys.